attention. Americans have the freedom of choice, and your choice for professional wrestling should be the American Wrestling Federation. wrestling promotion of the world today. I am Mick Kirsch. And I am your partner in broadcast excellence, Terry Taylor. We're going to see Johnny Gunn. We're going to see the Texas Hangman. We're going to see gentleman Chris Adams in action. We're also going to see Mr. Hughes with Adnan LKC. And we're also going to see Bob Orton Jr. with Sir Oliver Humperdinck in his corner. To the ring we go with announcer Bill Anderson. This is going to be something, ladies and gentlemen, with the American Wrestling Federation. Mick Karsha, Terry Taylor, and Terry, we are about to see one of the young lions in professional wrestling in Johnny Gunn. You're a lion. Oh. oh, yeah, he is. He's a great wrestler. You said young lion. Johnny Gunn, great guy. 265 pounds, six foot five, big. He's got his referee in there, Gary Granke, your favorite referee. He is my favorite. Absolutely he is, and wow. Johnny Gunn, you talk about a guy who stays in condition. This young man certainly gonna be making a great name for himself here in the American Wrestling Federation, and Terry, I have got to tell you, the response to the AWF has been absolutely overwhelming. We knew it was gonna be great. The response to the round system and the action in the ring, we never expected the cards, the letters, and the phone calls that we got over the past week. I did. My bot fan mail is overflowing, uh, and I promise I will not answer any of them without money in them. Oh, boy, Ronnie Vegas, viva oh, Ronnie Vegas. Well, he is donut on top of his head. That's from too many neck bridges. But this guy is attacking Johnny Gunn. I guess he doesn't care about Gunn's reputation and credentials. He's going after Gunn. Look at that effective scientific choke maneuver. Scientific choke indeed. Ooh, man. Johnny Gunn certainly a hit with the female contingent of wrestling fans. He walked into this building today, and what a response. The oohs and the ahs. Elvis is in the building. But Ronnie Vegas is hanging in there. Tooth and nail drills him with an elbow to the back of the neck. Well, that's what's so great about the American Wrestling Federation. Everybody's got a chance. There, nobody here is a slug other than you. But in the ring, I mean. Oh, good arm with there, reversal. Following him into the corner, and Ronnie Vegas all shook up. Big close line right there. All shook up. Right, all shook up. Johnny Gunn. We're not going to have a bunch of Elvis uh, double entendres, are we? Double what? That's right. It's when you go to eat, entendre. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the American Wrestling Federation, the most unique and innovative wrestling promotion in the world. Utilizing the round system, and that also tremendously oh, sleek shot into that top turnbuckle. And there may be a little jackpot there. The uh, the dice rolling maybe in the head of Ronnie Vegas right now. Looks like he's getting ready to crap out. That was unbelievable. Three quarters of the way across. And look at this resiliency. Comes up. Lariat duck. Boot right to the sternum. Uh oh, double chicken wing into a. He calls that the house oh. quake. That's got to do it, referee in for the count, two. Man, he is in. He could have counted 200. Very, very impressive on the part of Johnny Gunn. This kid absolutely sensational. Boy, did you see the height he got on that double chicken win? Speaking of height, look at that hair. All the girls love it. You're right. I can't stand this guy. Good looking, good body, and talented. Oh, a tremendous, tremendous wrestler. Let's take a look at the replay. Watch this, he jettisons Vegas halfway across the country. He ended up in Pennsylvania on that. He calls this the house quake. Bang, what a boom, what a match by Johnny Gunn. One, two, three, all over. Very, very impressive. 
the youngster Johnny got here in the American Wrestling Federation. Back we go to Billy Anderson. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is scheduled for three rounds. Introducing first from Dearborn, Michigan, weighing 201 pounds, Jimmy V. Jimmy V. Yeah, V for vaccination. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time I'd like to introduce to you the Sheik, oh, Adnan no. L. Casey. Here's the man. Ladies and gentlemen, last week he said he had a surprise for the American Wrestling Federation. He, brought, he promised to bring in a superstar. Let's hear what he has to say. Yeah. Uh -huh. professional wrestling and he is under the guidance of Sheik and not El Casey. Oh, this is terrible. I can't believe the strongest man in wrestling is here in the American Wrestling Federation. Hercules. We're, we're coming right back, everybody. Stay with us. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are back and there he is in Sheik and not El Casey has really done it this time. Hercules Certainly, Terry, if he's not the most powerful man in wrestling, he's in the top three or four. This is an awesome physical specimen, and how in the world young Jimmy B is going to be able to cope with this is beyond me. Well, yeah, I think so, too, but Jimmy B at 201 pounds is not that small a guy. He's five pounds lighter than Emmett Smith, who's one of the greatest running backs in the NFL history. Oh, he's going to oh. There's a rubber ball right off a brick wall there to kick things off. But can I say something real quick about the rules here in the American Wrestling Federation? Great slide through there by Jimmy B. Drop kick, not much of an effect. Tries it again. Look at how futile this is. Oh, he, like a common housefly, he just swatted him away. Yeah, but it's not that this kid doesn't have some talent. He's just way overmatched. Paul Alperstein, he said that he was going to... Oh. That's a choke slam. Alperstein, the president, said he's going to enforce the rules. Well, if anybody can stretch the rules, it's going to be Hercules because this guy likes doing physical damage to everybody. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you're new to the American Wrestling Federation, as we take a look at the Sheik, three four-minute rounds. It's the European round system brought to America by the American Wrestling Federation. Oh, my word. That kid is flying around like a mosquito. The mighty Hercules, he has taken a look at this youngster with disdain, with absolute disdain. Yeah, there's a stain on the ring oh. in the form of Jimmy V. Hercules is just so big. He oh, is so strong. If, you know, over the top rope disqualification. Touching Billy Silverman, the referee, disqualification. I mean, use outside stuff, disqualification. Paul Alperstein said he's going to enforce the rules, and he's going to have his hands full with a guy like Hercules. Now look at this. Now, if, the, if Casey touches it, that's a DQ, right? Disqualification? Absolutely. Casey is strictly up there just to humiliate this youngster. I think he breathed on him, and that's what knocked him down. Well, that'll do it, I'll tell you, if you get close to the sheet. Camel breath. Oh, he whipped him across the ring, followed him right in with that clothesline to the sternum. He could have pinned this kid at least a minute and a half, two minutes ago. This is this is a massacre he's got here. Yeah, get the chalk outliner out. This kid is a, I mean, bless his heart, he's trying That's hard. That's how you do it. That's how you take care of business, baby. That's pretty good, but you can wrestle a match and do your own commentary. Why are we here? Hercules is doing his own commentary. Oh, this is one angry man in Hercules. Look at this now. He's got that smile on his face. Oh, man. Whiplash, concussion, you name it, that has got to do it. And finally, finally put an end to this. Hercules, and look at the expression on his face. Look at everything. I mean, arms, back, the size of this guy at almost 300 pounds. That's borderline frightening. We're going to take another look at this. But well, that right there, a dynamic duo. Picks this kid, Jimmy V, up by the neck. Stands for vertebrae. Bang! Down he goes. Unbelievable move. And then he picks him up in this power bomb. And watch how he drives him into the mat. What a win for Vic. Uh, for, uh, I'm sorry, for Hercules. What a victory. All right, let's toss it to our friend Ken Resnick. He's with the Sheik and Hercules. Take it away, Ken.
Ladies and gentlemen, I must admit, I am not exactly overjoyed, to say the least, to see the presence of Sheik Adnan Al Casey here in the American Wrestling Federation. Oh, he is one of the most yes. devious wrestlers in the annals of professional wrestling. <laughs> Mr. Ken Rustic, I have promised you one thing, and I promised the American Wrestling Federation of my surprise. The caravan will continue her machine, and the barking of the dog will never stop the caravan. And this is my surprise. Take a look at him, the mighty Hercules. You know, Sheik Adnan, you promised me one thing. You promised me that in the American Wrestling Federation, that the wrestlers would be the biggest, they'd be the baddest, and they'd be the greatest top name stars throughout the world. And that I could come in here and I could defeat each and every one of them. You promised me, right. and I promise you, right. I'm gonna beat them all. <laughs> Mick Karsh, back to you at ringside. What about me? I'll Ladies take it easy. They'll get to you. Well, Thank I'm you very get to much, somebody. Ken Resnick. Tag team action on tap right now. Boy, I'll tell you, she had not LKC and Hercules, a force to be reckoned with, no doubt. Yeah, he sure is. Boy, oh, Billy Henderson's so excited, he said, Butcher, it's Butler Stevens. Holy, maybe he's a butcher part-time. We don't know. Weight up 560 pounds. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Take a look at this combination brought to the ring by a man who I still haven't figured out all these many years as a professional wrestling manager, Oliver Humperdinck with his Texas hangman. Man, you thought Humperdinck looked pretty bad. Look at those two bad hombres behind him. That's killer, and that's psycho. Psycho's the good-looking one. You know, I, I'm confused. How in the world can you tell the two apart? One weighs 270 pounds, and the other one weighs 302. Killer's the big one. This tag team combination, the Texas Hangmen, whether you like them or whether you don't like them, they are a precision machine in that ring. They are absolutely devastating. They were just as soon triple their opponents as pin them. And under Humperdinck's guidance, the sky's the limit. Yeah, these guys are big, nasty, impressive, and kind of smelly. I think they've been out on the trail too long. But they come into the American Wrestling Federation with tremendous credentials. Toughest job in the world right now is Jesse Hernandez as the referee trying to keep these guys back in the corner and under some sort of semblance of order. Well, part of this great crowd here on hand with the American Wrestling Federation, they're still lined up outside the building. Your wife is stuck in the door, right? They can't get past her. That's all right. No problem there. She didn't hear that, obviously. Killer and Psycho, the Texas Hangman. And Jesse Hernandez checking them for any foreign objects. They don't need a foreign object for heaven's sake. Well, they got a foreign object with red hair on the outside. Right here we have Steven Starton. He's in a stripey looking outfit. He's ready to roll. Boy, is he going to need to be ready to roll against these two hangmen. They're double tough. And speaking of tough people, let's go to a feature that we have called the Warriors Corner right now. Oh, Ted Hutt. It was great to be here in the American Wrestling Federation, and I want to take this opportunity to thank all my fans for writing and calling. I'll be back. I'll be back right here in the American Wrestling Federation real soon. See you then. You talk about an individual that certainly can match up with either Ooh. of the Texas Hangman or anybody in the sport, Sergeant Slaughter. He's a true oh. superstar. Oh, man, double team from the outside. I think Slaughter's probably got to be one of the top-rated athletes in the world, and that's why he's here in the American Wrestling Federation. Well, Butler Stevens fighting back, kicked in the back, kicked in the front, comes back, fight back. Got to admire that fighting heart. Well, absolutely, but I've got to ask you again, who is that in the ring right now? Was that Killer, Psycho? It's not, I know it's not Humperdinck. No, it's Killer, and that's Psycho. From the top, drills him across the back. Don't you know anything? Well, I'm learning. I don't have the 15 glorious years in this business that you do. Oh! And I don't think Butler Stevens is going to have six glorious minutes in this business if the, this continues. Yeah, he keeps fighting back, though. See, it all goes back to wrestling. Watch this. Bang! Beautiful belly-to-back suit play, German style. But see, Butler Stevens, all he's been doing is throwing belly shots on these guys. And you slap them on the back, and they're like planks of, oh, good kick. Oh, he's trying to get to the corner now. There's a tag to Brom, and he's in the ring right now. Drop kick right on the money. 
He staggers. But he got his wallet on his head. He staggers psycho. He's trying to mount some kind of an offense here. Oh! Ran right into that size 13. Follows it up, and there's Humperdinck. Very happy on the outside of the ring, directing traffic. Oh, look at this combination. They are absolutely devastating. Fix them up. Really? Yeah, you know what's impressive, though? The guys are both big. 290 pounds. Killer just drops that elbow into the chest, but there's great double team moves, great strategy, and great timing on their tags. Beautiful belly to back. Psycho did one killer said, You think that's good? Watch this. Right on the back of the head. And this looks to be a bot over once again, but Killer and Psycho. They haven't had enough yet. They, no, they're absolutely ready to not. They're bloodthirsty, this combination. And certainly, there's some of that Humperdinck influence there. That's his trademark. Well, this is their debut on the American Wrestling Federation. Humperdinck came out last week. They came out, told everybody what they were going to do. They're sending a message to every potential tag team in the American Wrestling Federation. You won't only lose against us, you might also get hurt. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the American Wrestling Federation and the round system. Oh, double team action once again. You know, Alperstein is in the crowd, right? He is. He had to find old Nails. Nails last week demolished everything. Alperstein threw a big fine out there. Who gets that fine money? Do I split it? Uh oh, it's a cinch you and I don't get it. Are you kidding me? I wish we did. That's a lot of money he took away from old Nails. I'd like to see who's going to collect it. But at least he's serious about what he says. Now watch this one over from that second row. Oh! Well, there's a very interesting pinning combination. Both hangmen in the ring at the same time. I don't think it made any difference if it was one, two, or the popcorn vendor or anybody. That one was over. Yeah, but I mean, we have a round system and nobody survived the first round so far this week. Boy, that action here is hot and heavy. I love it. Well, Butler Stevens and Mike Brom gave it their best, but unfortunately against a combination like this. Man, right here, he picks him up in a side suit play. Mike Brom up in the air, has that arm out. If that arm gets trapped underneath, he'll break it. Oh, man, almost a broken arm there. Texas Gallows, bang, hits him, and that's it. Let's toss it to our friend Ken Resnick with Tito Santana. With me, Tito Santana. Tito, we talk about the tremendous competition continuing to come in here to the American Wrestling Federation. Certainly the appearance of Sir Oliver Humperdinck broods for no good for a lot of wrestlers. That's exactly right. You know, the Texas Hangman, the only thing I don't like about them is their manager and their style. But Tito Santana in the American Wrestling Federation, the round system, the fans are liking it a lot. And the list of wrestlers wanting to come into the American Wrestling Federation is growing by the day. I'm talking about good wrestlers, Ken. Bringing back wrestling. That's what the American Wrestling Federation is about. You got Sergeant Slaughter, you got Chris Adams, and then you got the likes of Bob Borden, who, who I don't respect very much, Greg Valentine, and the list goes on. But Tito Santana appreciates the fans in the American Wrestling Federation, and I will always fight for the fans. Without question, one of the true fan favorites, Tito Santana, here in the AWF. We'll be right back. Arriba! Well, certainly, Great to see Tito Ladies Santana here in the American Wrestling Federation. And as Tito says, it's back to wrestling, back to the basics. Well, I think wrestling fans deserve at least that. It's a great sport. And Lightning Rod, I like that name, good looking guy. But they, fans, I think they should get that. I think when they pay to watch wrestling, that's what they should get, a contest. Well, absolutely. And take a look, you talk about a monster in this sport, tremendously popular with the fans in attendance today, Hurricane Smith, but Lightning Rod doesn't even wait for a bell. He's clubbed the big man from behind. Hurricane Smith is seven feet one, almost 400 pounds. We got a hurricane in the ring and a lightning rod. And well, that doesn't sound good for lightning rod, does it, with a storm brewing? Look at it. Oh, he's backing off already. There's a shot to the midsection. Hurricane Smith acting absolutely like it didn't even phase him. Oh, what a shot. Well, lightning rod, Tried to take the early offense even before the bell started, perhaps his only chance of winning this one. And now it has completely Ooh. backfired. He's raised the ire of big Hurricane Smith. Oh, is that it? That's I it. I hope so. 
Man, what a big guy. Took him right out. Unbelievable win by Hurricane Smith. Lightning rod, not too much offense. And there you have Hurricane, arms up in the air. You see him line it up. It's a jet taking off. Yeah. Boom, thunderclap right on top of Lightning Rod. And there's no sparks in this ring. Let's go to another match, cards. Why not? That didn't even go one round. Oh, this has been absolutely boom, boom. Back to the ring we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this next contest is scheduled for three rounds. Introducing first from Newport Beach, California, weighing 222 pounds, Bobby Bradley. Well, this is one tough individual in Bobby Bradley, very tenacious. And his yeah, he never quits, and he's got some talent. 120 pounds. Uh oh, 320. From Kansas City. This is Cars. Hey. Hughes. Wrestling, big Mr. Hughes out of Kansas City, eyeballing the fans with that look of disdain, gets into the ring in his street clothes, doesn't even bother to get into wrestling attire. He's not wrestling attire, he's wrestling Bobby Bradley. This guy's 330 pounds. Where does Mr. Hughes wrestle and what is he wrestling? Anything he wants. Well, Bobby Bradley, as we mentioned at the outset, is a very tenacious, very, very tough individual, but I do believe in looking across the ring at Mr. Hughes, he knows what he's gotten himself in for. Certainly a victory over Hughes puts him right to the top of the world of professional wrestling. Yeah, Hughes is a big, tough guy trying right now to intimidate Bobby Bradley. I don't think Bobby start of a match he has drilled Bobby Bradley early on here he wants to get this one over quickly yeah and boy he sure is he's throwing the heavy artillery Bobby Bradley down again Mr. Hughes starts this thing before the bell even goes man something's gonna have to be done about this here's my favorite part oh. of the TV let's go to the warrior corner right now Karsh let's go to it Michael P.S. Hayes the fabulous Freebird been all over with the rest now I'm here with the best in the AWF, and you know what they say, when opportunity knocks, this fabulous Freebird sure do know how to rock. Well, Michael P.S. Hayes confident to a fault as usual. Certainly, President Paul Alperstein inciting oh. Michael Hayes with a real coup, but now, oh. Alperstein in the building. You know, Terry, he has to take a look at Mr. Hughes and those rules violations. Certainly, the situation with nails last week. Alperstein's going to be throwing out fines like can He said 5,000 bucks, I heard. He's going to take from nails. I'd hate to have to be the guy that tries to collect that. Mr. Hughes, how do you collect fines from these guys? I don't know, and I'd hate to have to try to... What a drop kick! Look at the agility oh, of a 320 man. Mr. Hughes, the guy can wrestle, there's no question about it, he prefers to maul, but certainly the technical skills are there. He's still got his glasses on, you can't hit a man with glasses, is that a psychological ploy or something, I don't know. Look at this, straightening his tie now for heaven's sakes, he's, oh look, is this is a, a pin for, no, no, he took his foot off of Bobby Bradley's chest, humiliating and embarrassing this kid. Yeah, Bobby Bradley just threw a left tear, a right hand that had nothing left. Now he's tearing at his face. If Alperstein doesn't look at this and think something's going on and something has to be done, then that guy is no kind of president. Well, Mr. Hughes is absolutely methodical. Whoa. Sidewalk slam. That's got to do it. I hope so for Bob Bradley's sake. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Mr. Hughes, you talk about a mean, vicious individual. You're looking at him right there. Yeah, Mr. Hughes is real happy with himself. He just beat up a guy who weighs 110 pounds less than him, kept his earring in, and kept his sunglasses on. That in itself is a feat here in the American Wrestling Federation. Irish whip into the corner. He's got Bobby Bradley going. Whoa, launches him into the stratosphere on that back body drop. Bobby's in bad shape, barely has enough to hit the ropes. Hughes launches himself, bang again! Drop kick in the face, 
Great movement, great agility by a big, big man. And right here, his signature move. The sidewalk slam driving Bobby Bradley into the mat. What a victory for Hughes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's send it to Ken Resnick with the president, Paul Alperstein. While we're waiting for Mr. Hughes to make his way to the interview area, I've asked Paul Alperstein, president of the AWF, to join me. Paul, last week you were very specific when you talked about enforcing the rules here in the American Wrestling Federation. In fact, you went so far as to levy a really substantial fine against here? Nails. This is my interview time, and ain't nobody going to enforce the rules on the rough neck! Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Hughes. In the American Wrestling Federation, the match doesn't start until the bell sounds. And for your actions in the ring, you're going to be fined $3,000. What? what? No, 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 wait a minute. Don't nobody make a fool out of me. I have never in my life from beating up anybody starting a match before the clock starts been fined before. But let me tell you this, Paul Somerstein, you think that you can take money out of my pocket? Let me tell you this, don't nobody make a fool out of me. You throw them dogs in front of my face, I'm going to kick them just like the dogs they are. Give me some time, anybody will go down. Ladies and gentlemen, this next contest is scheduled for three rounds. Introducing first from San Antonio, Texas, weighing 202 pounds, Trevor Blanchard! Well, there's Trevor Blanchard. Now, is he or is he not related to Tully Blanchard? Have you found out yet? Yes, I have. By his manager, well, Sir Oliver Humper. I'm telling you. He is from Kansas City, weighing Well, we've got the Kansas City connection pounds. here, apparently, today. in professional wrestling. Second generation, his father, Bob Orton Sr., a champion in his own right. And certainly, Junior, here in the American Wrestling Federation, has his sights set on winning the championship gold. Yeah, this guy is a tremendous wrestler, tremendous tactician. Yeah, I mean, this guy has been a star for many, many years. And when you see him in the ring, you'll see why. This guy is fluid, no wasted movement, and deadly in his precision. You know, his father, as I said... Wait a minute, Blanchard's trying to put a fire out in that corner. Well, he's going to have to put a fire out here in the person of Bob Orton Jr. I mentioned his father, one of the legends of the 1950s and 60s in professional wrestling. Joe Blanchard? No, Bob Orton, for heaven's sakes. Bob Orton Sr., although I have to believe that his son certainly has surpassed his greatness. This man is tremendously talented, and truthfully, Terry, he can go either way. You want to wrestle scientifically, he'll do it with you, but he prefers to throw that rule book out the window. Yeah, he can brawl with the best of them. Great escape there. Uh, takedown by uh, Orton. Escape by Blanchard. Another takedown. Blanchard sits out. Nice move. Gets out, and look at that little frustration there by Bob Orton Jr. And, Humper, and what's Humperdy going to say? Uh, uh, nice sit out. Yeah, yeah, there he is. There's, he wrote the book on pro wrestling right there, Oliver Humperdy. You know, you talk about fines and rule breaking. Give Paul Elperstein credit. We wondered if he was going to do anything about Mr. Hughes. Lo and behold, instantly that $3,000 fine. Yeah, I'll tell you, that was a, almost like a cash machine the way he got that out so quick. Two great spin under takedowns by an awful man by Blanchard. And got a punch right in the face, and then there you go. You're talking about go any way you want. Stuck a finger right in the eye, and does it again. And oh, you, man! Everything that Bob Wharton does in that ring is precision. He lines up his man, he sets him up, and then he drills him with high impact. He's using his feet, fingers, and hands so far. And Blanchard right now, poor Trevor's flat on his back. I don't know if there'll be a 10 count involved in this match or not, but we haven't seen round two in this hour yet. Well, that is testimony to the level of talent here in the American Wrestling Federation. And in Bob Orton Jr., you are seeing one of the greats. He hoists Trevor Blanchard up like a sack of wheat, Ooh. drops him on that top rope, much to the delight of that whatever he is on the outside of the ring in Oliver Humperdinck. A gargoyle. Right on. That yeah. is absolutely right. Or he could look like one of those little trolls. Remember with the orange hair sticking up? My kid has one of those. Looks better than he does, believe me. Orton now setting him up for that signature maneuver, the pile driver. That's been outlawed almost every federation. Oh, man, he nailed it. That is one of the most dangerous moves in professional wrestling. It's been outlawed everywhere. Two, three. Orton takes 
the measure of young Trevor Blanchard. What a victory, and everybody in here showing how they disapprove of Bob Orton Jr. and the troll. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take another look right now at how Orton systematically dismantled Trevor Blanchard. Kicks him right in the face, uses the ropes as an ally because why not? They're there. Uses one of those devastating moves. Boom to pile driver Blanchard's 5 1. Let's send it to Ken Resnick. He's there with Oliver Hufferty. There is no question the very first manager to sign a managerial contract here in the American Wrestling Federation. The very colorful oh, Sir Oliver. Another shirt? Another shirt. There's damn packed people in this arena tonight. I'm sweating to death. I'm out here on TV. I want to look as good as I can for you and everybody else out there. Listen, let me tell you something, Killer Ken. I'm here for one reason, and that's to get all the marbles. Wherever I go, I'm there. I figure into the picture, brother. And I'm here in the AWF to do just that. And now, let me introduce the prize of the House of Humperdinck, the man who's going to wear the AWF Heavyweight Championship one day, Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to witness poetry in motion, baby. The way I walked out there methodically took a very good wrestler apart. <laughs> <laughs> and the way it's done is know-how, Daddy. Willpower, knowing how to bend the rules and not break them. Knowing how to beat somebody. A force to be reckoned with, indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, this next one. Well, we are back, and I've got to tell you, you talk about a couple of pretty faces that only mothers could love. Bob Orton Jr. and Oliver Humperdinck. Well, I talk about another pretty face. Look at that Ron Powers pacing around like a caged tiger. That is one massive individual. Big Rod Powers, but his opponent certainly could be one of the greatest technical wrestlers in the sport today, and a man well suited for the American Wrestling Federation's rules system, gentleman Chris Adams. Yeah, he's also from England, so that's where the round system originated. Chris Adams thinks that's gonna make him the first champion. We'll have to wait and see. He is a great competitor has that super kick, and I want to try it out on you, Karch. Now you're not trying anything out on me. We'll be back, everybody, in just a moment with gentlemen Chris Adams and Ron Powers. Welcome back, everybody, and what a matchup this promises to be. Gentlemen Chris Adams out of Stratford on Avon, England, to do battle with this monstrous Ron Powers. This Ron Powers, we don't know a whole lot about. He's out from the Midwest, I know. He's 270 pounds. Got that wild hair going on. Chris Adams got that reputation that's worldwide. Has just returned from a tour in Japan. That wasn't jet lag right there. That was Ron Powers with a 500-pound legitimate bench press shoving a 240-pound man on his posterior. You know, if anybody should be acclimated to the round system, it's gentleman Chris Adams. Basically, that's how he got started in the wrestling profession, going that route, tailor-made for him here in the American Wrestling Federation. Tailor-made? I knew you'd catch that. Ron Powers, on the other hand, certainly is going to present a very formidable obstacle here for gentleman Chris Adams. Powers is a huge individual. He reminds me of somebody. Yeah, he reminds me of Ron Powers. This guy is big. Nasty. Chris Adams has made a reputation beating guys like this, but you never know who's going to be the one who gets out of wrestling. Whoa, what a move. Well, Rod Powers telegraphed that just a little bit, and Chris Adams with that speed and agility and over the top with the backdrop now. Drop kick right on the jaw. Look at Adams. He's on fire. Great agility by Chris Adams, and we find out right now Ron Powers is a tough kid. He took a high body drop, back body drop, and a drop kick, rolled out, and he's smart. I mean, he knows he's got three four-minute rounds, and if it takes all of them, he's going to take him. I, I think this is good strategy on a young man that we don't see a whole lot of strategy from young guys because they just want to go in there and young and strong and attack. Well, of course, at that point, Rod Powers asked for timeout, and you're certainly not going to get that in professional wrestling aside from the time between rounds here in the American Wrestling Federation. Adams in with the side headlock, hip lock takedown, and now working on that huge neck of Rod Powers. That's got to be to the tights of Mark Mick. Every, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but every wrestling move has a counter or a reversal. See how he's got him rolled up, but he's got Adams' neck crimped and his body up over. It's very uncomfortable. Chris Adams has to really hang on. 
When Chris took over Powers in that headlock, he had that arm trap. His brother Neil is like a six times judo champion worldwide. And that judo background, I think we might see in some of Chris Adams' wrestling. Got off the ropes. Well, ineffectual there. Adams tried the shoulder tackle. Rock Powers didn't budge. Drop down. And a nice reversal. See how he throws that hip in? Nice arm break takedown. Oh, that's a Japanese submission move right there. It's an elbow hyperextension. I guess he didn't think he had it good because he went into an arm bar. But see how he's got the head trapped? Pulling the arm back on the shoulder. Great move by Chris Adams. I'm telling you, he went to Japan. He's got that European style down. And now he's showing what he learned in Japan. Well, certainly one way to counteract the power and the size of Ron Powers. Take him to the mat and wrestle him. And you're looking at a master technician right now in the person of gentleman Chris Adams here in the American Wrestling Federation where the name of the game is wrestling. Yeah, fabulous point, Cars. I was getting ready to make that point myself. And right there you see the clock. We have 29 seconds left. And you see Powers get to the ropes to break that submission hold. Great move. But Adams goes right back to the arm. Well, he's trying to take away one weapon in the arsenal of Rod Powers as we are in the waning seconds of this one. Whoa! Follow him in. Adams out of the way. Oh! He's got him in that submission hole again. Just seven seconds left. Is it enough time? Is Powers going to call it? Boy, I don't know. He's in a bad... He's been bad trouble. He's trying to get his head up and get out. Trying to fight that pressure. Adams, hey, let him go. Would you have let him go? I know you better than that. Not for a second, and you know, there's a perfect example, Terry, how the round system comes into play. Perhaps if there would have been more time for Chris Adams, maybe Ron Powers would have conceded, but as it was, time ran out in the, in the round, and there's our round girl. Round number two, let's take another look at right, some of the action. Yeah, there's a backdrop by Chris Adams, follows it up. Look at the height on this <clears> drop kick. <throat> Bang, down goes Powers, he seeks the higher ground. And then look at this arm submission where he drives him down and then leans up on that elbow. And as we start round two, Rod Powers still favoring that arm. He hasn't even made it over to his corner. He's in a bad way. Yeah, he had one minute to try to get back into that corner. And at that same time, Gary Gronke, the referee, has a scorecard. And if this goes the whole three rounds, then he decides who the winner is. Well, certainly a fairly even matchup in round one. Yeah, I think it was pretty even. I think these guys are evenly back. Boom, right back to that arm, Chris Adams. Goes for that elbow submission. He's got it hooked. You see Powers trying to rotate away from it. I tell you, this is a great match. I don't want to break away, but we have a feature called the Warrior Corner. Let's get to it right now. Well, last week you morons wanted to know it, and right now I'm going to give it to you. He's going to be here next week in living color, but right now just to whet your appetite, luscious. Tommy Rich. <laughs> and one of the greatest wrestling matters in wrestling today, Rico the Hammer and myself. Y'all stay tuned next week. We're coming your way. Well, give some credit to Rico Suave. Oh. What a cool, luscious Tommy Rich. Yeah, he is luscious, isn't he? Oh, boy. Two in the morning, maybe. Back to this great match, though. Nip and tuck, both guys. Great shoulder smash by Adams. Powers gets out of the way. We're wait I'm waiting to see some of that power. A little confusion there. Whoa, whoa, I talk about power. Turn it on. There he is. He's got him about eight feet up in the air right now. Only one place for Chris Adams to go. Oh, dropped his neck right across that coiled steel top ring rope. Yeah, and look at that. That's that strength. I was telling you, if this thing goes long enough, I think Powers has got a real good chance against a veteran like Chris Adams. And he's following up. I'd have hit him in the throat, being the 15-year veteran that I am. There you go, see? You've got to pinpoint a place and attack it. And that's what he's doing. Great wrestling by Ron Powers. Well, Chris Adams certainly in a bad way at this point, but he's been there before. The stamina of the staying power of this man second to knock on What an assault right now. On the part of Rod Powers, he's got the gentleman from England hung up in the corner, goes to the opposite side of the ring. What in the world does he have in store here? That's great agility, but look at this camera work. Unbelievable, the way we're almost too close. The human body, even if you're from England, is not made to bend that way. Oh, he has it twisted like a pretzel. The referee, Gary Grocky, continues the count. Trying to get Powers back into the ring. Well, I wonder if um, Paul Alperstein's watching this as closely. I mean, that's a dangerous situation right there. 
Well, I am very impressed with what we're seeing from Ron Powers right now, at least at this point, taking the measure of Chris Adams. Oh, and a big clothesline. He nice. says that's it. Look at that cover. Kind of, he doesn't even have his left arm trapped. Well, you're not going to pin a man like Chris Adams with a lackadaisical cover like that. Oh, look at this maneuver now. Dragon Sleeper. That's a big move over in Japan, and Powers knows it. Boy, we don't know a whole lot about Ron Powers because he doesn't have the reputation Chris Adams has. But look at the way he's got that locked in. Adams' arm is secured. Got the head, got that bicep down across the throat. And look at the extra leverage using the ropes. Well, you know, you talked about Ron Powers, and we don't know a great deal about him. What we do know is that in the American Wrestling Federation, there's parity, there's tremendous talent, great matchups, and here's a perfect example. Ron Powers hanging in there with a superstar like Chris Adams. Yeah, and, and I'm very impressed with Ron Powers. You said parity. Is that like Terry Taylor, TT, parity? Everything goes back to you, doesn't it? It should. Great rear chin lock here by Powers. See how he's got that neck yanked back? I'm telling you, years and years of punishment that Chris Adams has taken. Maybe this kid has scouted him and says maybe his neck is not in the shape it should be, or maybe he has an injury. Well, let's see if Adams is trying to trying to get to his feet, trying to modify bridge. Got the out clock of this in the corner. One. See it? You betcha. We're down to 23 seconds right now. Takes him back down to the canvas. I think the strategy power says right here, I'm just going to work this guy over. I've got him in a bad way. I'm not going to rush it. I'm not going to try to get the pinfall in before this round is over. I'm just going to try to choke the life out of Chris Adams. And he's putting that body weight on Adams and again using the ropes for leverage as we're in the waiting seconds of round number two. Hey, Karsh, I know you don't know it, but we've actually gotten through round two. It's the first time ever. A tremendous matchup indeed, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back for the continuation of this one. Ron Powers and Chris Adams, stay with us. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're back, and during the entire break, Ron Powers continued the assault on gentleman Chris Adams. The Raw girl finally able to get into the ring, and now he DDTs him. For heaven's sakes, Paul Elperstein has got to take a close look at Ron Powers as well. This is kind of a messed up situation here. I mean, he heard, I'm sure Powers heard that Hughes had to pay three grand for it. Now he's going after him with a stool. That's got to be worth about 7,500 more. This guy must have Rick's parents or something. Well, certainly the rules are very clear. That rest period, that break is for exactly that purpose. You stay in a neutral corner and referee Gary Gronke absolutely ineffectual in trying to stop Rod Powers. Yeah, but I mean, what happens if Chris Adams can't answer the bell because of what was done to him during the rest period? Very I mean, interesting point. Only in the American Wrestling oh. Federation will that situation come up. But man, he, that's the second time he's dropped Chris Adams' neck on the ropes like that. You've got to know one on top of another on top of another, and then he hangs him upside down. He is working on the throat. He absolutely is. Now he's taken off that elbow pad, and he drills him with that ball, that bare elbow, right in the throat. There's no muscle there. There's no bone there. There's nothing to protect that windpipe. And Rod Power is at 275 pounds. I mean, this is a dangerous, dangerous situation. Look at Chris Adams. Well, you know, I've got to tell you, Terry, at this point in time, I don't want to sound like Jimmy the Greek here, but I'm smelling an upset in the making. Nick the Geek. Ron Powers certainly, oh, tremendous suplex, taking the measure of Chris Adams at this point. Now, if you're Ron Powers, are you making a mistake by not following up when you clearly have an opportunity to pin Chris Adams? I think so. If it was me, oh, I'd be oh. attacking because that's the kind of stuff that happens. Chris Adams has been around a long time, and at six feet one, 237 pounds, he's not the biggest guy. I mean, he's got a reason he's been in wrestling so long. Oh, super, super kick! kick. He, Out of nowhere! He caught him right in the face, and this one is over! Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. When it looked bad for gentlemen, Chris Adams, that super kick, that ace of the hole, and he nailed Rod Powers, and this one is history. Gentlemen, Chris gets the duel. I can't believe it. Out of nowhere, boom, you see him kick it right in the face. You see that heel kick in old Powers and takes him down. Unbelievable victory out of nowhere for Chris Adams. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what a matchup. Let's send it to our friend, Ken Resnick. Take it away, Ken. I thought it was redneck. If there were any doubters as to whether the round system works in professional wrestling and here in the American Wrestling Federation, 
Chris Adams, you certainly answered that. That match with Ron Powers, one of the best matches I have ever witnessed, bar none. What a great job, Chris. Well, thank you, Ken. You know, thanks for the compliment. I knew that the American Wrestling Federation, the minute I heard about this place, was the place for me. You know, it's got real wrestling. It's got some of the best wrestlers in the world. I mean, names like Sergeant Slaughter, Tito Santana, Michael Hayes. It goes on and on. Bob Orton, it goes on and on. Now, that boy that I just wrestled, I know he's very good. He's got lots of charisma. He's got lots of potential. I just feel that I was a little more experienced in the round system than him, and I think that gave me the advantage. Well, Chris, there's no question. We talked about you're used to the round system in Europe, but, boy, what a tremendous example of how that can work inside the ring. It can work inside the ring, and the AWF's going to use it, and Chris Adams is going to use it, so watch out. Chris Adams is the name. I'm standing with the Warlord, arguably one of the most powerful men in all of professional wrestling. Now, Warlord, next week you are signed for a tag team match here in the American Wrestling Federation, but everyone wants to know who's your partner. <laughs> what do you like to know? And you think I'm big? And you think I'm bad? And you think I'm crazy? Well, take a look at this. <laughs> Now, Warlord, uh, as big and strong as you are, what in the world makes you think you can even control nails? <laughs> what makes you think I want to? <laughs> there it is, Mick and Terry next week, Warlord and Nails together in a tag team matchup. What a war that one's going to be. Back to you two. Man, I can't believe it, Cars. Can you imagine those two behemoths on the same team? You've made the right choice with the American Wrestling Federation. So until next week, you're dismissed.